require you to pay a fine of $1,000. And you understand that you face today a possible maximum penalty of 15 years in prison? Yes, when law enforcement officers are held accountable for their actions, it serves as a reminder to society that everyone is subject to the law. These are the instances when officers are made to acknowledge their responsibility. In August 2017, Euclid police officer Amiot got himself involved in a case that would later lead to assault with a black driver, Richard Hubbard III. Amiot claims the driver had resisted arrest. Interesting that the state is making the argument that the stop is a separate offense than the assault because Mr. Amiot was not charged with a violation of any crime for the stop. The interfering with civil rights lays out the facts supporting that charge in the charging document, which is the assault. It mirrors the exact same language. The jury instruction mirrored the exact same language. And so the state now asks this court to sentence Officer Amiot separately for conduct which he was not charged for, which he has not been afforded due process for, and which would be in violation of his constitutional rights. It is intriguing how Amiot was not initially charged with any crime until Hubbard came forward. I proceed. My name is Richard Hubbard, and you know, I appreciate the, uh, the jury and the court for making the right decision. You know, what Amiot did something was wrong. He should have received the maximum sentences today. You know, I'm still going through like the suffering with anxiety, you know, driving, just this, the temperament, the trauma, and everything that's just a cause for this this case. I'm, I'm ready to get it over it actually, but just coming back in here just like bring up everything, you know, and just to see him over there, you know, see all that just coming back in this court, just like it's, it just brings up everything like we live at the moment. So, you know, I hope you get the maximum sentence of the The pain in Richard's words is evident. The officer caused him so much pain. Next, we hear the statement from the officer, and it appears he showed little remorse. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to the court for allowing me a few minutes to speak. It's been a long road. I was 31 years old at the time of this incident. I'm 37 today. As I get older, I tend to put things in perspective more. We're all molded and shaped by our experiences of life and the outcomes of those experiences. Following his emotionless and lengthy speech, the court finally delivers its judgment. Uh, Mr. Hubbard, let me say to you, uh, it's been seven years. Uh, the city of Euclid uh, compensated you. If you need assistance, you need to go and get that assistance. But uh, I'm not going to say you're not going to have uh, instances of flashback or what have you, but you need to uh, move on with your life also. And not uh, let this incident uh, continue to hover over you. The judge provided prudent advice to Hubbard, suggesting that he seek assistance if necessary and endeavor to release the memories associated with the event. The evidence presented and the pre-sentence investigation. And the court at this time will impose a sentence of uh, 90 days uh, require you to pay a fine of $1,000. The court's decision reflects the severity of the harm caused by this law enforcement officer. Next, we examine the case of a law enforcement officer who neglected his duty to protect. At Tonawanda City Courthouse outside Buffalo, New York, a heated conversation between a couple alerts Tonawanda City Cop Michael Lewandowski. He approaches them, saying they should leave, but they refuse. Another officer tries to intervene, and in seconds, Lewandowski loses it and forcefully pulls the man out of his seat into the hallway. Outside the hall, the camera shows Lewandowski attacking the man who's trying to battle with another officer. The woman, seeing this, tries to intervene, but the cops push her against the wall, causing her to hit her head. This doesn't stop her as she begins to scream at the officers. After forcibly removing the couple from the courthouse, Lewandowski proceeded to handcuff them and escorted them out without any charges. 
Lewandowski was later suspended for five days for the use of unnecessary force. Four years later, a local news outlet released the footage of the incident leading to Lewandowski's termination from office. Next up, one of the worst cops in history finally faced justice. Are you being done now? No, my friend Melissa, so she's going to be the hold of her friend's job. Okay, well, put it this way. You need to go home. Less than five minutes for her to make that decision and not uh, end up probably in your car and you can go to his house, okay? Oh my God, please. All right. In June 2016, a former Covert Township police officer, Eric Fritz, pulled over a woman, Melissa McMillan, and her driver for drunk driving. Observing that Melissa was intoxicated, Eric decided to take her to a hotel instead of getting her a ride home. Melissa, trusting that he, as a police officer, would protect her, agreed. Well, your first recall is after leaving Captain Lewis. It's so hard to remember because everything is so blurry and... and being on the side of the road. You do remember that? Very, very vaguely, yes. Okay, down in one of the beds that was in that room? Yes. Okay. And do you remember doing that? or? No. Okay. Did there come a point in time where do you have any memory of the officer returning to the hotel room? No. Okay. And every, when, when, when is your next memory of seeing the officer there in the hotel room, if at all? The next memory I have is he was on top of me, um, having intercourse. Melissa accuses Officer Fritz of raping her in her drunken state, but the latter claims it was consensual. Fritz was later arrested and charged with kidnapping and two counts of criminal assault. In this next clip, we get to witness the consequences of his actions as he faces justice. And sir, you are Eric Fritz? Yes, Your Honor. And, and you're here today with your attorney, Mr. Grable. Have you had a full and complete opportunity to consult with him? Yes, Your Honor. And you understand that you face today a possible maximum penalty of 15 years in prison? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing he might face up to 15 years in prison must have been good news to the victim and her family. But Fritz doesn't seem to care, and he tries to remain composed. And the police officer who took an oath to protect and serve the community, what you did to me was wrong. You made me. You knew I was highly intoxicated, yet you used that as a selfish opportunity. My life has been forever changed. Every aspect of my life has been affected. My children have struggled. My friends, family, and loved ones have watched me through a year of hell. I can't see a police vehicle without feeling fear or be reminded of what happened. The actions of this cop have affected the victim so much. There's nothing scarier than having those who are meant to protect you turn their backs and hurt you. Yes, Your Honor. First, I'd like to apologize to my friends and family who have actually worked down. I'd also like to apologize for my coworkers who I embarrassed by my decisions. Um, I'd also like to apologize for people, to the people of Cobra Township for my actions that night. And I absolutely would like to apologize for Mr. Millen for my horrific decision of offering her a hotel room. I never should offer her a hotel room in the first place. It never should happen. I never should put her in that situation. At least this cop knows his actions are embarrassing and is now taking account of his actions. Uh, you took a law enforcement oath of honor to protect and to serve and to uphold the highest of ethical standards. Instead, you preyed upon and exploited and damaged a woman, a woman who was entirely helpless due to excessive intoxication. Even more disturbing to this court is the fact that you used your badge and the authority and power it grants you as a means to implement your criminality. You betrayed her, you betrayed your fellow officers, you betrayed them mightily, the public trust all of us had. At the conclusion of the court session, Fritz received a sentence of one year in county jail followed by five years on probation. Although this consequence may not fully repair the harm experienced by the victim, it serves as a reminder that justice is impartial and that everyone is accountable for their actions, regardless of their status. 
Will these events deter other law enforcement officers from acting recklessly in the future? Only time will tell. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing so you won't miss out on our next one. This is Detective Mystery, signing off.